So I'm from Singapore, Nan Technological University. It is a relatively quite a young university. I have been named as world best young university on QS ranking for continuously for several years. And we hope that we continue to have this good ranking. When you have time, do come to Singapore to visit us after COVID. Uh, within the university, we do a lot of research. And one of it, of course, uh, very related to today's topic, which is 3D printing. And we have a few flagship 3D printing research centers at NTU. One of it is Singapore Center for 3D Printing, which is funded by National Research Foundations. And at the same time, we also have uh, research centers focusing on digital manufacturing that we set up with companies such as uh, HP. And within all these flagship research centers, we do a lot of uh, 3D printing research and uh, our portfolio actually is actually a wide spectrum. We cover oil and gas application, construction design, aerospace industry, and very importantly, bioprinting and applications in biomedical. So with all these advances in material that we have, that we can print now with more and more advanced machines, we can see that we can now print better and better, higher and higher risk biomedical applications. For example, class one devices, low risk such as biomodels, surgical guides, implants, medical implants, metal implants, and even uh, biodegradable implants. So the development of 3D printing technology is really the inevitable development that we reach the stage that now we can combine many different technology in biology, in hydrogel, using the know-how that we accumulated in cell culture, we have now reached the stage that we have the, the development of a new field that is called 3D bioprinting. So it's essentially 3D bioprinting right along the knowledge that we have gathered in 3D printing, where it gives us the inherent ability to control 3D structures, to define the end output based on the design parameters rather than process parameters that we are now able to additive manufacture tissue and organs one day. And based on that development, we see parallel track between 3D printing and 3D bioprinting. So a lot of elements that we see in 3D printing is actually being mimicked and being uh, inherent applied in 3D bioprinting processes. For example, the process flows have a lot of common imaging design approach. Then after design approach, we have to select the good material that will go along the cells. And with that, with the requirement of material and cells, we are now combined with the bioprinting process to reach the end outcome that we want to achieve certain constructs, be it a small piece of tissue or a organ level, so that we can apply it for further maturation, implantation, or for application in in vitro testing. So the question is, as we all know, we know there are full potential in 3D bioprinting. We know there are, there are a lot of room for us to keep on discovering new sciences, new material, and we have all our vision set on the final goal and we would like to print organs so this also go into the field of tissue engineering and bioprinting become a new tools that enable us to reach tissue engineering with with even more excitement but are we really there yet so at one hand in our vision we see we want to print a whole heart just as in this picture in front of you but at the same time if we go into more detail and we look into the result being published uh, the test method being used to test all the materials and the cells responses, we actually see that the shapes and the size that we get and, and the complexity of the material that we get in bioprinting is actually quite far apart from what we want to achieve as a whole tissue printing or organ printing. So this Conflicting requirement in terms of the cells and the material is the key relationship that we must approach together as a community so that we can find the, the, the middle ground that allow us to reconcile the conflicting requirements on material and cells. When we try to reach a large size uh, organ level printing as our end outcome, so on one hand, when we talk about cells inside the material to achieve bioprinting, we will need soft and porous hydrogel. 
and that would be very friendly to self. The self would like to have room to survive, have porosity so that it can exchange uh, ingredient, exchange ways. But the soft and porous hydrogel is not friendly to process. So we will not be able to achieve shapes and control of resolutions if we use only soft and porous hydrogel. And the, the other spectrum, you see this very beautiful, very cute gummy bear, it represents a group of material that have high predictability, that we can get good shape fidelity, but it is challenging to put cells inside. So the material will not be friendly to cells, and, and that defeat the purpose and become a challenge for us to achieve a bioprinted construct with cells inside. But that is the whole purpose of us to develop bioprinting technology, where we want to deposit different group of cells at the predetermined location, so as we can coach the cell to form a community that can function as a mini tissue or an organ later on. So how do we go about overcoming these material and process relationships? And that is actually a requirement of us to have system thinking in 3D bioprinting. It is very different from 3D printing, where 3D printing every step can be separated as a standalone single value chain. But for bioprinting, it's really a system thinking challenge that we have to choose the right material to fit to the cell and also at the same time, the process is able to manage the material and not to affect the cell negatively. So it's actually an overall strategy that we must see to it from step one to step six. And one of the current strategies in material and processes, if we take an example for exclusion bar printing, then the ability to achieve the end construct at the, at the specific shapes and fidelity that will require a lot of creative thinking in achieving a material cross-linking point during the process or after the process. So I'll just quickly go through a few, a few strategies in material. For example, material designed method, which by optimizing the viscosity of bio-ink to achieve the final, the final resolution and accuracy of the printed material. In this case, we have created a hydrogel that have high printability. So we can see that uh, you can actually print very complex constructs uh, with no leakage in water or gas. The other strategy in material is by doing pooling design, by doing tool design on the bioprinter to do core extrusion of bioing and crosslinker so that the crosslinker and the bioing will meet at a certain point and based on that, it will form into a, a material that can hold its own shape so that we can then build up layer by layer to form the final construct. Then next is to use time designs as the approach in the strategy to form the material, which is sequential deposition of precursor and cross-linker, where the cross-linker will be deposited afterwards so that it will form the reaction in situ in the construct to form the shapes that we want while holding the cells inside. And lastly, the last strategy in material by process design is to print into a crosslinker, a bath of crosslinker. And from there, using the buoyancy from the crosslinker in the bath, it can hold the shape while the material is taking some time to crosslink to form the final shapes and have the mechanical integrity to hold the shapes. So this is also another work that we have done. We use indirect bioprinting, which we print two different material. One material that serves as a temporary mold, and we deposit the final built material, which is the final hydrogel material containing cells. Then we remove the mold material and leave behind the final material so that we can have the crosslink material that is fully formed with cells. And this the outcome that we get. We are able to form a collagen lattice structures with only 100 micron thick strands printed in 3D and full of cells. So this is a method that we can make use to using process creativity to manipulate low viscosity and cell latent hydrogel to form the shape. While we talk about the shapes and size, there's also another aspect that we must also put into the strategy of our printing, which is the cells depositions. Where are the cells? How accurate do we deposit the cells? And that gives us the room for droplets based process to come in, which gives us a good control of the cell. So for example, from here you can see that the droplets, every droplet we are able to use the process to control up to uh, three cells inside each droplet or more cells inside each droplet by modifying the ink. And it is also important to highlight that 
for droplet base while well, it gives us the resolutions of cells depositions on the constructs we have to be very acutely aware of the droplet impact and if we put cells inside the droplet then we really need to investigate what is the physics inside the droplet with cells so this is an ongoing work and we work with hp for the microfluidic part so in summary it is not just about the resolutions of the print constructs it is the shapes of the construct and also the control of the cells location, which in this paper we call it the resolution of cells. So there are two sets of resolution. One set of resolution is the physical resolution, which is the print resolution of construct. And the other resolution is the cell resolution, which are uniquely that we are able to manipulate in bioprinting compared to uh, the strategy of scaffold for situ engineering. So in this case for bioprinting, we, are, we can talk about how many cells, where are the cells inside the material. And subsequently, I would like to also talk about that the, when we talk about bioprinting is not just shapes and cell deposition, the function of the cell is more critical than anything else because bioprinting is a life process. So in this case, we can make use of bioprinting to direct cell responses. So by doing different bio ink with tunable stiffness, we can see that the cells inside the hydrogel will actually display different morphology based on the stiffness of the surrounding that the cell sends. When the cells have more room to spread, they will spread out. When the cells have no room to spread, but yet the hydrogel can host the cells to survive, so the cells actually form into spheroids in this work. And this is another work that we do uh, using the process, not just as a process to create the out outcome of the shapes, but using the functions of the process to create cell alignment effect inside the hydrogel. So that will give us more advantage when we talk about cardiac patch or certain directional cells responses. And this is also another word that we do, that we use the bioprinting process to deposit uh, selective melanocytes on the substrates so that we can create homogeneous color and that will give us the first step towards mimicking natural pigment color for skins. And uh, the other work that we do is to print photoreceptor retina tissue models by using droplet base, we deposit the cell population according to the original design to mimic the design of cone and rod cell distribution because the cone and rod cell distribution have very distinct different pattern and this one work where we print uh, the tissue model. And lastly, the interdisciplinary nature of 3D bioprinting must also be a uh, highlight in terms of setting up the strategy for bioprinting, which will give us uh, good progress towards uh, lab on chips, the tissue models for animal testing. So if we combine that with the flexibility of 3D printing with uh, of uh, microfluidic chips that will give us even more room to create new capabilities in cell processing or cell encapsulated droplets productions. And this is also another piece of work that we do to show the interdisciplinary nature of bioprinting that we can actually combine many other technology to enable uh, bioprinting technology that is more advanced than we imagine. For example, we, by using our know-how in printed electronics that we do to create a uh, bandage sensor, strain sensor, and pH sensors, we actually can combine our know-how in bioprinting and the electronics parts so that we can create a brand new platform that can call holes, living cells, living beside inorganic material that can conduct electricity or current, and that will give us a new platform to move forward for uh, uh, smart drug fluid devices such. So bioprinting is definitely not just bio, not just printing, it's beyond biology. When we talk about 3D printing as a digital technique that will be important for the industry 4.0, and that kind of advantages that we gain from 3D printing is also relevant for bioprinting. And this should also be put together as an overall strategy to get the applications and new software that we need to uh, enable us to process even more complicated shapes for tissue and organs. And for now, we already have many processes in biofabrications, tissue engineering, and definitely we'll have more processes of bioprinting in the future. So in summary, 3D bioprinting is still an emerging stage. It evolves very fast and very dynamically, and the researcher must innovate with system thinking to achieve the final goals. 
as bioprinting is beyond biology, we have the opportunity to link it up with lab-on-chip bioelectronics, artificial intelligence, machine learning to enable a more smart bioprinting process. So new strategies are expected when we combine all these new technology to enable optimal cell responses and the knowledge and know-how in material and process and biology will continue to expand. It will be a summary of uh, the work of my group, bioprinting and 3D printing for biomedicals. With that, I thank you for your time.